Hello everyone, this is Fidel Master Victor Neustroyev and thank you for coming. Today I conduct uh, my mastermind where I am going to talk about how to coordinate your pieces properly. I prepared two games for you and uh, several positions where we are going to understand how to coordinate a certain pair of pieces in order to achieve something. This is actually the main part from which you may learn. And uh, to warm up, we start with the game analysis. It's the game between Alexandra Meek and Paul Murphy. You know, Paul Murphy is known as a, as a chess player who was able to coordinate his pieces much better than uh, other chess players living in his era. Okay, while we are waiting for more attendees to come, please let me know if the sound and video quality is good. Okay, so just let me know, I'm waiting for your comment, uh, that uh, everything works pro perfectly well. Okay, thank you. So, uh, today, uh, today I also want you to register on uh, for the tournament that we are going to conduct on, on the 23rd of October. Or on chess.com it will be a blitz tournament and there are three money prizes uh, participants who gets the fourth and the fifth place are get a free lesson with feeder master Okay, so let me show you where to register. Please look at the screen. This is our website and these uh, all information about the tournament is here. I'm just going to copy the link and uh, send it to you in chats. So for example, here, here as well. Uh, three money prizes. The first one is $100, so the second one is 50 and the last one, the third one is 25 And here it's written about the fourth and the fifth places. It will be a, a Blitz tournament with uh, probably nine rounds. It depends on the, on the number of uh, participants. But I think nine rounds will be played. We expect about uh, maybe 100 or 200 players, not more, and nine rounds is enough. Okay, where else? Oh, just a sec. Let's wait for more attendees to come, and we are about to start in just in a few mi two minutes, actually. Uh, well, here. Mm -hmm. So the link for you guys to join. Join the tournament. Okay, perfect. Uh, so let's go back and discuss the game that Paul Murphy was. Uh, playing against uh, Alexander Meek. So Paul Murphy was playing with black pieces here. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, d4. So it starts like a, a scotch game, but actually it was scotch gambit. They didn't take the pawn on c4 right away, they played bishop c4. 
bishop c5 in order to protect. So most people uh, play here c3, which is a quite natural move, then knight f6, they take, then probably bishop b4 check, and this is a well-known position that is approximately equal. However, uh, white decided to play knight g5 with the idea of <clears throat> threatening on f7, Black responded with knight h6, which is the most common move, and white applied a tactical strike. <clears throat> with this tactical strike, they uh, were able to gain um, the bishop back, but you see, here all uh, active white pieces were exchangers, and they can't really take the advantage of uh, king being on f7. And this position is considered to be approximately equal. d6. Queen has to move. Rook e8 attacking the pawn. And this is where uh, uh, white started to make mistakes. So they play queen b3 check. But uh, please, look at this position. So, starting from this moment, Paul Murphy tries to speed up his development. So, uh, and a vital part of pieces coordination is a good development. He tries to locate his pieces faster and to better spots. Queen b3, d5, and now the pawn cannot be taken. Uh, this is where they better castle. For example, rook takes e4, and uh, well, yes, white is down a pawn in this position, but these pawns are doubled, so this is a playable position, why not to continue it? However, they played f3, and f3 was actually a mistake. Uh, here, knight h5 was played, not the best option, but still a possible move, and white retreated to d3. What do you think? How black should continue in this position? Well, not bishop e6, there is something better that black can do. So what comes to your mind? Okay, I'm waiting for your suggestions, but I don't see any anything. Okay. Now. Oh, okay, yes. That's right. Uh, I'm not sure if I can pronounce your name properly, but I think it's Ezekiel. Take one a4 and then queen h4. That's right. This is what exactly Paul Murphy did. G3, rook takes e4. That was a mistake. It was much better for black to capture with the queen, exchange the queens. And uh, then, let's say, king moves, black has extra pawn and plays for a win. I'm sure here Paul Murphy would defeat his opponent, but if he defeated uh, his opponent in this manner, we would uh, probably... We wouldn't probably analyze this game because it won't be so interesting for us. He took with the rook. So you see, uh, here, Paul Murphy has a chance to capture on e4 with his queen or with his rook. Well, uh, yeah, let's uh, remove this sign. It's not actually a, such a big blunder, but it is a, not... Well, uh, he wants to get more pieces involved into the game. So when you want to succeed with the attack, uh, 
and you have a choice to check with the piece which is already into the attack or to check with the piece which is uh, maybe on the other side and is not participating in the attack, you should join more pieces and take with the piece that is not participating in the attack yet. That's why he took with the rook considering that after king moves he can probably play queen f6 or something like that. But uh, there is something he blundered. What do you think now white can do? What comes to your mind? Uh, no suggestions, but uh, well, <laughs> white also missed this opportunity. Instead, they moved the king to f2, which is a mistake. So what do you think? Try to guess what other move they could play. And keep in mind that the queen on h4 is hanging. Thank you, Parallax, it's bishop e3. The idea of such a move is that uh, if rook takes, it's just queen takes rook and then pawn takes h4. That's why in such a position uh, black has to move the queen away, after which white can simply unpin and deliver a check, let's say bishop f5, bishop f2, and this is where white could probably survive. Black is still better, and I'm absolutely sure that Paul Murphy would even win this game, but after king f2 the position is just terrible. However, the next move Paul Murphy played is also a blunder. Well, not a blunder, but a mistake. What do you think? How to continue in this position for black now? Who knows the answer? Queen of six is not a mistake. Queen of six is a good move, actually. And yes, this move will, yeah, should be played in this position, of course. So queen f6 should be done. This is the best option. What happens then? Well, let's see. Um, for example, if they decide to continue with bishop f4, it's just bishop f5 threatening with a check. So we create an attack. If it's uh, something like that, we can play queen c6, which also looks good. Now, oh, if uh, rook f1, I just believe this is a good option. So. In the game, uh, Queen e7 was played by Paul Murphy, and this is something. Uh, this is where he missed something. White played knight d2, so the position was so sharp that both players um, were making mistakes and couldn't calculate the line properly. I believe if, for example, Paul Murphy was playing against uh, somebody from our days, even international master, he would definitely lose the game. But during the time when he was uh, one of the best players, um, there were no such people who could beat him. Nowadays, people calculate better, understand the position better. But uh, these basic principles, when you need all of your pieces to join the game, uh, were first uh, implemented by Paul Murphy.
So he is considered a kind of innovator who invented it. So queen f6 should be played. Queen e7 is a mistake. Can you please explain why queen e7 is such a mistake? So the game is full of mistakes, but I <laughs> demonstrate you as an example of uh, perfectly coordinated pieces by black. Well, in fact, they tried to get more pieces involved, but uh, not some of their not th some of Murphy's moves were best options. But he realized the main idea. So, what do you think? There is a counterplay white can apply. No ideas? Okay, thank you. Yes, it's bishop g5. That's right. Oh, guys, if you don't see uh, such comments, it's because uh, I'm streaming on uh, several platforms. So bishop g5 was commented uh, on uh, Twitch. So bishop g5 with the idea that if queen g5, it's just queen takes e4. However, I still believe that this is a good position for black. This king is weak, these uh, two pieces can be well coordinated, while uh, white needs to develop this knight first, and he can't do it right away, none of these squares can be um, played. So they, they can probably pass the game to the end game, which I think is the best opportunity for them, but then they face with some problems after this move, bishop f5, so at least black has a compensation for the exchange they sacrifice. If, for example, queen e5 to not sacrifice, then knight d2 with a temper and the rook is trapped. Well, it can probably go there, but then knight f3. Well, um, they didn't play such a move. Uh, they played knight d2, rook e3. Here, for example, queen d4 would be a mistake because of just rook e2. And uh, after, let's say, this move, it's knight c6, and then uh, queen tries to come to e3 to checkmate the king. So, for example, where queen f4, king g8, and uh, then we can do something like that, or h5 and check from g4. So, a lot of good opportunities while our opponent is in the trouble. If he tries to play this, it's just a checkmate in one. That's why queen b5 was played. c6. So uh, here we can let him take because after rook e2 the checkmate is unavoidable. Let me show you. Rook e2. Well, if he goes there, it's a checkmate in one. If he goes there, it's first bishop h3, and after this move, it's checkmate in one. So queen f1. Now play like Paul Murphy and bring more pieces into the game. What would you do? Yeah, I, I look at all chats on chesslands.com as well as on my YouTube account, Twitch account, and from time to time I'm also paying attention to what is going on on Facebook. So Parallax suggests Bishop G4. Well, Bishop G4 looks like a good move. Uh, with the intention to join more pieces into the game, but then King G1 you have to play with the king. Well, it's not so bad. But here, the key idea is actually not to use the bishop, but to join the rook. What do you think? How to join the rook? We 
with bishop h3. Well, bishop, you gain a temper because if they just take on h3, it's rook e2. Oh, this leads to a checkmate. Sorry, like that. If this move is played, it's also a checkmate. Uh, this move here. And h5. Well, if they play this move, it's queen e7. If they sacrifice the queen, the checkmate will be... Yeah, will be... Well, we can find the checkmate uh, after that, with no doubts. Uh, if they take and after rook e2 king goes there, then rook e1 works, because our queen joins e2 with a checkmate. So that's why queen d1, they still need to cover the e2 square. Rook f8, so all pieces participate in the game, and even this knight is participating in the game, because otherwise the queen could move to c4, gain a temper, and still protect the e2 square, and prevent us from playing rook e2. So, queen has to go there, and then rook f8. One move left, and all the pieces will join. Knight f3, and uh, here... King e8. Well, uh, why uh, king e8 is not the best move? Because king g8 is a slightly better move. But actually, there is no big difference. King g8 uh, just uh, is g8 is just a safer spot. King e8, and uh, then actually white resigned. Why? It's because rook f3 is coming. And if bishop e3, it's queen takes a3. If, for example, something like that would be played, it's just rook f takes f3, queen takes f3, rook takes f3, the king has to take and queen takes e1. So, what you should understand when you decide how to coordinate your pieces? Uh, try to get more pieces involved in the the place of action so for example here black focused on the attack of the enemy king and after playing these moves they were able to join all pieces including the knight which is actually located on the edge but covers an important square on c4 of course it was better to keep the knight somewhere on d6 but even on a4 the knight does at least something and participates into the attack and here with bishop h3 and rook f8 all the pieces join. So you see how it should work. And don't forget that in order to coordinate your pieces properly, you should develop them as fast as you can. Develop doesn't only mean that you should move uh, the pieces from their initial positions, from their initial positions, but you should decide which uh, square is the best for this concrete piece. And uh, if, for example, you are not sure where to move the bishop, let's wait and play another helpful move. Okay, now let's do some puzzles uh, to learn how to coordinate pieces. For example, this one, where I want you to realize how these two bishops may be coordinated with each other. So, in other words, checkmate or gain material with white pieces and try to use these two bishops coordination they play the most significant role So who can tell me the answer? Okay, so there, there is a solution. Okay, we, so rook h6 is probably the first move. Well, uh, can you please tell the full line? Guys, if you have other suggestions, 
just uh, don't hesitate to say them uh, I mean to type them in the chat Six. No ideas or what? Maybe the puzzle is too complicated. Okay, so rook h6, bishop b2. Uh, well, okay, parallax suggests rook h6, g takes h6, bishop c4 check, king h8, then rook f7. Uh huh. Okay, I'll check it. Uh, rook a another solution by 4k rook h6 g takes h6 bishop c4 king h8 okay bishop c4 king h8 bishop b2 but then bishop g7 thomas thinks that bishop c4 should come first thomas i absolutely agree with you you guys you are on the right way but uh, bishop c4 should be played first because if you don't do uh, if you just play rook h6 they will do the same thing with your bishop Okay, so finally we came up to the solution that here this move should be played first. King goes to h8, rook h6, and if they don't want to play without a piece, they have to take it. But then uh, this would be a checkmate if not the bishop on f8. So let's destroy the bishop and deliver a checkmate. They of course block it, but it's just a temporary defense. Well, uh, here you may say, what uh, if they don't take but play this move? Well. I think it's still a winning position. Let's just take this pawn. That should be enough. Two bishops and uh, actual, in fact, two extra pawns. And the king is weak as well. And bishop f7 is coming on the next move. So this is a terrible position. So a bishop pair can be um, coordinated in uh, several ways, especially if the bishops are covering the neighboring diagonals. Okay, so this is one of the ways of how to coordinate bishops. There are a lot of other options, but uh, today we don't have enough time to cover that. That's why I chose um, maybe the most popular way of how to coordinate two bishops. The next one, this, uh, this one, well, here we have a lot of pieces. And here I want you to realize how knight and rook uh, can be coordinated together so why to move what would you play well you can play with any of your pieces but I want uh, but your rook and your knight uh, play the most significant role here Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for more for more answers. Guys on uh, chesslast.com, please. Any suggestions? Okay, there is another suggestion. What? Well, knight e6. What if they don't take? The queen is hanging. Knight e6 cannot be played. Okay, so yeah, there was a correct solution by parallax and uh, R rfac87. Also, Thomas suggested this move. So it's queen g6. That's right. With this move, you are threatening the mate. There is no other way to get rid of it, uh, get rid of a mating threat, uh, than uh, to take on g6. But then rook g7 check, king goes there, and here the rook traps uh, the king in the corner, while knight delivers um, a checkmate. 
this is another way of how you could coordinate so keep uh, this pattern in your memory and uh, every time when you think how to coordinate these two pieces uh, remember it and uh, you can base your combinations on it well if the knight was on f6 let's say the rook could stay on h7 and such a pattern is called arabian mate okay uh, now bishop and knight sorry let me flip the board here you're playing with black pieces this is a nice combination uh, where black, uh, of course, attacks the enemy king, but it's a kind of a complicated attack where you have to use uh, several of your pieces, not only a bishop and a knight, but your bishop and knight play the most significant role here. Okay, uh, well, guys, uh, Manish, I look at YouTube chat as well, and I see your uh, comments. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you provided this uh, solution a little bit later when I've already started uh, demonstrating the combination. But yes, I see your moves and I'm watching. I'm reading all the comments while you're thinking I'm reading comments when I explain something I don't read, of course. Okay, uh, so <laughs> as I told you, I also read uh, comments on uh, Facebook. So what time do I stream? I stream every time at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So Eastern Daylight Time. And uh, it's uh, 6 p.m. Well, no, it's, uh, it's 4 p.m. London Time and uh, 6 p.m. Moscow time. Well, guys, let me give you a hint. Here you should start with rook b4 in order to distract the knight from d3. Now the knight is here and you can start your king side attack directly. So, yeah, we distracted the knight, but what's the main idea? How do we coordinate our knight and bishop in order to make them interacting with each other? Well, uh, here Peter suggests knight takes f2, king f2, and bishop g3, but, uh, well, king f1, and if you decide to use your queen to f4, they just block with the bishop on f3. So it's not a big problem for uh, for white. Well, you can take only one, but uh, you are down a piece in such a case. So bishop h2... And if the king goes to h1, knight f2 is a mate. I agree with you. But uh, here the point is uh, how to deal if the king goes to 
F1. Now I don't see a checkmate. Well, actually, I see a checkmate, but it's not so obvious. Do you see checkmate too? Well, bishop h2 is possible here, that's right. And uh, then knight, king comes to f1. How would you checkmate him? Aha, uh -huh. queen e4 suggested by Anera. Well, nice move. Uh, and uh, if you were white, how would you defend in such a case? Aha, aha, aha. Okay, uh, yeah, there are some suggestions. Let me just uh, demonstrate it. Bishop h2, king f1, uh, knight g3, f takes g3, and queen b6. Right? Queen b6 with the idea to play this move. But actually, it fails. Well, just bishop goes there, and this is not a checkmate. Ah, uh, rook e8. Yeah, rook e8. Well, okay. Uh, let me find something else here. Well, yeah, looks like it's the only solution. Go there, here, here, check, and uh, probably move the king. But uh, it's not a checkmate. It's a winning position for white. I think so, but it's not a checkmate. Yeah, because, well, you are threatening with it, but they can just play knight d5. And after knight takes d5, bishop takes d5, and escape to c4. Well, I am sure black is winning here. But it's not the best idea. Uh, bishop h2, king f1, and then uh, what? Ah, knight g3, f takes g3, queen? No, it doesn't work. And if queen f4 is played, it's actually bishop f3, and now f2 is protected. So, in this position, after king f1, what's the right move? Oh yes, now wipe, wipe Sonic is correct. It's queen b6. Here queen b6. How to protect this pawn? Well, the answer is either this or that move. Or maybe another move with the bishop. But who cares? In both cases, you checkmate with the knight. So let's say bishop f3, queen takes there, rook has to take, and then knight comes to g3 preventing the king from escaping to e2 and delivering a checkmate. So this is how you can coordinate your bishop and knight in uh, when you are looking for a mating combination. It's not the only pattern, but uh, this is an important pattern that you should definitely keep in mind. So let's uh, go back and uh, I'll show you once again. Here, if king goes there, it's a mate in one. King goes to f1. Queen b6, and uh, you are threatening to take on f2. They have only two moves. Block with, uh, defend with the knight, or move the bishop somewhere. But in both cases, you take on f2, and checkmate with the knight on g3. Okay, now I want you to interact with queen and bishop. So let's get these pieces coordinated. If the bishop was here, I would say, well, you just need to sacrifice and checkmate on g7. But the bishop is on c4. It looks like it's hard to get two pieces involved into one action. 
but it's still possible. How should you do this? What do you think? Okay, uh, so yes, I'm looking to the solutions that you suggest. Well, while you are thinking, guys, I would like to remind you that here at chesslands.com you can book a free class with one of our coaches you just go to the main page which is chesslands.com click schedule your free chess lesson choose the coach you would like to take a class uh, so if it's a trial class it's only a 20 minutes class but during this period you may ask you, your coach about uh, uh, you can demonstrate one or maybe a few games and uh, ask them what you should do in order to improve if you have some concrete questions about the opening you play you may ask there let's say you um, choose who let's say feeder master nikolai yordanov then uh, this is your time zone here well it shows it shows mine and for example if you live in america you should, let's say America, Toronto. So uh, the largest city of Canada. So here you can choose the time that suits you well. Let's say it's 24th of September, 6 p.m. Enter your name, your family name, your date of birth. So for example, sorry, uh, here this is mine then your email click proceed to payment and here you uh, should write your credit card number we uh, it we don't uh, charge any money but two dollars will be on hold so what means that you will get them back after the class or maybe a few days even before the class so we just need to make sure that uh, you are a real person and you have a credit or a debit card so we won't charge you this class is free then you click book and uh, get a confirmation uh, the link to a zoom meeting will be delivered uh, 15 minutes before the class okay now let's continue with our uh, mastermind and I want you to coordinate the queen and the bishop well I'm going to share the link with you while you're thinking Okay, so now I'm reading your solutions. Uh, rook takes h5, then g6, and then queen takes g6. Bishop f7. Well, bishop f7 is a nice move, but after king takes queen h7, he escapes here. Ah, well, you can probably take here and take... The, ah, no, knight g7. Knight g7, and you can hardly continue the attack. Well, probably you can do this move, but uh, I have doubts about uh, whether it works or not let's say queen e5 they take here and uh, i don't really see how you can win right away so bishop f7 doesn't work the right solution is rook h5 they take and then g6 you are threatening with a mate like that or with this and this 
that's why it's hard to suggest anything. Probably h takes g6, but you take with the queen. If king goes there, it's queen of seven mate. So here you locate both pieces on one diagonal, and this is how you deliver a checkmate. And the king goes there, then one of the pieces covers the squares where the king can potentially escape, but the other one checks it. So in this position, there is nothing black can do to avoid queen h6. Well, they can sacrifice the queen, but it's just a temporary defense. Okay, so even if your uh, bishop and queen are located on different diagonals, you can still coordinate them if uh, your bishop does one function that helps the queen to trap the enemy king in the corner and checkmate. Now, knight and queen, or queen and knight, What do you think? How white should play in this position? Well, uh, here are uh, four pieces participate in the into the attack. This rook doesn't at the moment, but uh, queen and knight does the main function. So white to move, try to find the solution. So look at what the bishop does and remember that if you play something slow, they are most likely to exchange here. So one of the solutions that is suggested is knight h5, threatening with queen takes on g7. However, if you play such a move, uh, black doesn't play g6. Well, if black plays g6, queen g7 mate. <laughs> no, 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 no. So knight h5, they need to protect the pawn. Uh, actually, the g7 square, not, not the pawn. So they are most likely to play queen e5. After which, I think you struggle with a continuation. So knight h5 is a wrong move. Knight takes f7, rook takes f7, and knight e6. Queen b8. And looks like the best you can do here is just to take on d8 and exchange two minor pieces for rook and the pawn. Knight h5, knight f6. Yeah, knight h5, knight f6 is a bad idea. Just uh, knight takes knight, g takes h, uh, f6, rook g3 and queen f6. If it's not a checkmate, then black has to sacrifice the material to avoid it. So knight h5, actually queen e5 is enough. Queen g7 is suggested by Red Dragon Master. Okay, Queen g7, and what then? Okay. Looks like there is a good solution by Wipe Sonic. Yes, this solution is correct. It's Rook takes h7, threatening the mate on g7. Well, there is no other choice but to take. If, let's say, knight f6 in this position, then it's rook g7, king g7, knight h5, then queen takes here and delivers a checkmate. Oh, for example, h3, so g4 and the checkmate. Rook g8, still g4. They sacrifice, but uh, there will be a checkmate, no worries. So rook h7, what's the idea why they can't capture with the queen, with the king? 
If they do, you have these. And then, together with the knight, you threaten the mate. So there is no defense, nothing can stop queen h8. But this time, knight g6, uh, knight g6 was available because of the bishop. So here, together, you try to coordinate these pieces, but knight g6 would be impossible if not the bishop. So this is another example of how knight and bishop also can be uh, coordinated. So once again, rook h7, it's a forced move, you are threatening with a mate and if something like that, you just continue with uh, knight g6, threatening a mate. And if king h7 this time, knight takes e5. So rook h7 they take, queen goes there, king goes back and after knight g6 there is no defense. The next one is devoted to major pieces. Here your task is to coordinate mainly with major pieces. However, you may notice that the bishop already does something. The bishop covers uh, the square where the king should potentially escape, but cannot at the moment. What do you think black should do in this position in order to checkmate or gain the material? One important thing I want you to remember, when you are trying to coordinate your major pieces and uh, deliver a tactical strike, uh, the first thing you should take a, pay attention to is a back rank mate. And this, uh, uh, this uh, puzzle is not an exception. Here you, can, you should be still looking for a back rank weakness. Okay, so here it looks like every, everyone is correct. Just waiting for a little bit more comments. Uh, I mean, try, I'm trying to collect more answers from you guys. Okay, and uh, those who suggested rook takes e4, can you please continue the line? So, for example, rook takes rook, what then? Yeah, Thomas is correct. It's queen takes d6. Because you cannot play rook a1 right away because there is a, a rook on the d file that can block on d1. That's why rook a4, rook takes e4, queen takes d6, and you gain a bishop. If they accept this sacrifice, then rook a1 leads to a checkmate. If not, then you are just up a bishop. If, let's say, here they take on d6, you take on a1 with a checkmate. So in this situation, there is nothing they can do in order to save. Well, yeah, if they play something, just rook e6 back or anything else. Okay, so this is how you learned how to coordinate uh, certain pairs of pieces. Now let's get... Let's dive deeper into details and try to analyze the game. We are, we are going to analyze the game where uh, famous uh, Soviet and uh, American grandmaster Boris Gulko um, implemented some of these ideas and uh, tried to coordinate and maneuver with his pieces and win the game. This uh, game, when he was played, Boris Gulko was playing against Brownie.
Okay, so let's start the analysis. Um, it was c4, e5, knight c3, knight c6, uh, knight f3, and then f5. Actually, a weird move, but uh, still playable. g3, English opening, uh, knight f6, d4. Well, yeah, d4 is right. When the black doesn't develop pieces but plays with the pawns or exposes the king, the best way uh, to punish them is to open the position in the center. But, of course, everyone understands here that black is going to play e4 and uh, such a position usually comes, usually it appears in Dutch defense. One of my students plays Dutch defense. I actually... I didn't want her to play this opening, but she likes it a lot. That's why we decided to keep it, but uh, learn it so she is able not to get a bad position after the first 15 moves, and, uh, and at least she understands the idea. So e4 blocks the bishop on g2. And uh, for this game, uh, Gulko prepared this move, knight h4. Uh, he played the match against N Nigel Short and uh, originally wanted to apply this move in that match, but didn't have such a chance. That's why he did it now. g6, protecting the pawn. Bishop g5. Bishop g7. Uh, queen d2. Well, uh, here you can uh, ask me, what about h6? Does it mean that we should move the bishop away, uh, the, away or capture on f6? No, h6 here is a blunder. Can you please tell me what's wrong with this move? It's knight g6, yeah, it's knight g6. Knight g6, so what they can do? Well, if they play this move, we take here and there. If they take this, we take there. And then this knight escapes after h4. So h5 protecting the knight. Okay, there was a question by uh, Peter, why not to play this move? Well, it's just a pawn hanging on a 5. And if you try to trap it, well, I can just retreat to e3, for example. So, knight h4, bishop g7, queen d2. h6 in this position leads to the end game which favors uh, white. So here, queen d6 in order to protect both, but uh, then just queen f4 exchanging them and uh, with the pawn and taking the pawn on g6. So queen takes these and these are weaknesses. Well, d4 is a weakness as well, but uh, you just need to play e3. For example, king f7 take, goes there and e3. And if you think they can take earlier, they cannot. If this move would be played, then it's castle queen side, rook b8, e3, knight goes back probably, and after rook g1 there is a weakness on g6. And knight e7, then c5, and the strong pressure. So let's go back. So queen d2, castle, bishop g2, knight e7. So, why, what do you think? Why knight e7 was played and what black wants? Try to realize it. And also, can you please tell me what white should do in this position in order to improve coordination between their pieces? So, looks like now the bishop is blocked. The knight on the edge is not doing much. This knight is good. It attacks the central square. It attacks e4 as well, but there is a pawn on the 5 So it's only half useful. Well, the bishop is good. And can bishop h6 can be probably played, but I'm not sure if it's required at the moment. 
what do you think White should do in order to improve uh, the position of their bishops or the position of their pieces not only bishops So I'm looking for your suggestions, guys. Aha. Uh -huh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, yeah, there is a good, um, uh, well, what, knight d5, you mean? Yes, f3. So they are about to play d5 and activate their pieces, or maybe even c6, d5. And actually, white should hurry with this move. This is what is required to be played at, uh, right now, while d5 cannot be played here. Because if, let's say, you finish your development with castling, then d5 and what? Take, take f3 now. Well, but I still believe they have a very solid position. f3 should be played now. f3, they can't ignore it because the pawn is hanging. e takes f3 and bishop takes f3 to cover d5 square. c6. And this knight cannot uh, participate in the game. So it goes back to the place of action. Here d5 uh, will be a weakness because of pawn takes, pawn takes and knight f4. It's really a weak pawn. I just don't see actually how to defend it because bishop f6 and then take on d5 with three defenders against, well, with three attackers against two defenders. White uh, is about to win it. So knight g2, d6. Castle. Bishop e6. What do you think black is going to play? And uh, what do you think white should do? Here, uh, white not only tries to improve coordination among their pieces, but also to disrupt the coordination between among enemy pieces. So. Well, for example, here the knight can jump to f4 with a temper, but then bishop f7, let's say. Yeah, parallax is absolutely correct. Here d5 should be played in order to prevent them from playing d5. After c takes d5, they capture with pieces, exchange everything and get a better position. Try to attack our pawn on d4 and probably our pawn on e3. That's why d5 c takes d5 c takes d5 and in this critical moment it was better to keep the bishop on this and this diagonal but black played uh, black played bishop f7 that was a mistake well the bishop is only doing one function attacks d5 but d5 is well protected how to continue then well here you may uh, realize that queen b6 is a very uh, annoying check sometimes. That's why uh, as a prophylaxis, well, here they want to play b5 and if knight b5, queen b6 check. And if you decide to block on d4, they'll take the advantage of this pin by playing knight e4. To avoid it, well, you can play a4, but a more helpful and uh, uh, universal move can be this. King h1. 
Queen d7, so they still want to play b5. a4, rook a to e8, they bring more pieces into the game. How to play now? What comes to your mind? How to maneuver with your pieces to improve their coordination? Which of your pieces at the moment is not doing much? What do you think? Okay, rook c1 to occupy an open file. Uh, well, let me quickly tell you a story. Um, uh, my old coach uh, is a candidate master, he is 2100. And uh, I also have a cousin who, who is also a candidate master, he is 22 and something. He is really good in chess and um, we recently played. Uh, well, this time I am better, but maybe 20 years before he was better. Just maybe not much, but slightly better. So he has a, another coach. His coach was Soviet master. He, his title was... Uh, master of sports of the ussr and after uh well after 1991 when uh, soviet union was broken uh he changed his title to national master and uh, well he was learning from old soviet school and uh, he always tell uh well my cousin and my uh, well and other students that if you don't know what to do move your rook to the open file the rook will be helpful there anyway so that's why a rook uh, c1 is a helpful move here uh, but which rook to play i would say rook fc1 actually not a because maybe we will push the pawn forward but that's not the best move here uh, we should improve the position of our bishop which is not doing much there is no pin the bishop is only threatening the knight and this bishop is unlikely to uh, leave its position moreover the bishop is likely to become a strong piece in case if the diagonal gets open that's why here bishop a3 with the idea of bishop d4 and exchanging these bishops looks good uh, well of course when you play bishop d4 you shouldn't blunder on d5 but you don't Every time they take on d5, you have knight takes, uh, and then bishop takes f6. However, in this position, black reacted with knight c8. They didn't want to weaken their queen side. Bishop d4, king h8. Now this knight joins the game, knight f4, and uh, something like that only would weaken the position. Knight e6, bishop takes, pawn takes. Queen takes g5 then, so it only favors white. They played bishop to g8 here. Now b3. Well, here the, it's not a big problem to play this move. The diagonal gets open, but the bishop is already there. Rook e7, rook a c1. So uh, white decided to, uh, to not push the pawn. maybe they will use this rook somewhere else a6 so here by the first glance you may say that white pieces are well coordinated i can't imagine better spots for them looks like they occupy ideal positions but how can you transform it to something material what can you suggest here in order to fight for the initiative and gain the initiative what do you think
so guys please suggest what you think and one more request for <laughs> one more request for you please um, don't forget to uh, click if you like this video especially for those who watch my um, mastermind on YouTube okay yeah parallax is correct here you should uh, play e4 in order to create some initiative what happens then for example if f takes e4 you take only four with the knight they take your knight and looks like you lose a piece but here you have a sneaky move knight g6 with which leads to a winning position queen h6 bishop h7 and then you take the rook this bishop is pinned so you see here this uh, bishop's position on d4 plays the most important role in this combination that's why e4 is actually not a sacrifice at all black didn't take it they played rook f to e8 bishop retreated to g2 to get the file open you'll see it for example if now this move uh, then uh, well bishop h3 can be played yes and uh, if queen moves to d8 you can still take on g6 and capture on f6 here i would suggest you to capture on f6 with your rook because then uh, queen comes to h6 so bishop g2 they played knight g4 still bishop h3 now all pieces are into the attack but white uh, needs to create a breakout bishop takes d4 queen takes d4 check rook blocks on g7 and e takes a5 trying to expose the position g takes a5 knight h5 so you take the advantage of the pin and gain the exchange Well, rook e5, knight takes g7, and this position is winning. They played a few, mo few moves more, and uh, after that, uh, black lost on time, but the position was completely winning. So here, white tries to exchange pieces because he has already enough material to win this endgame. d6, the knight goes there, that was the last move. Here, queen f5, d7, and so on. The position is completely winning. But I want you to look back, and here, after e4, rook f8, this, and this move, bishop h3. Well, was there anything else that could save their position? Let's say, what about this move to stabilize the position in the center? Still this move won't work take on f5 and well queen f5 falls under a discovered attack probably i uh, actually no no queen f5 queen d1 and the knight is in a trouble if they play this move it's even knight h5 and they cannot capture with the pawn the queen is under attack so they capture with their queen then uh, bishop g4 so g takes f5 knight h5 anyway and uh, here we want to join our queen into the attack and uh, well actually no we are threatening with this this and that because if they take our knight it's bishop takes f6 with a strong pin and extra material so rook f7 take on g4 anyway knight f6 and they still have to sacrifice the exchange because if they take the queen is lost so what you may learn from this game first of all uh, try to develop your pieces as fast as possible second try to look for your opponent's opportunities and for example in such situations when you see that uh, they are about to play something that then uh, 
makes it harder for you to coordinate pieces, try to prevent it first and play like, like, like it was F3 in that game. Then look at the pieces that don't participate in the game and try to improve their position like uh, Boris Gulko did here with knight g2. So here finishing development. Finally, uh, here for example, uh, they realized that this bishop requires improvement. It was a4 to prevent b5 first and then bishop came to a better spot. And when all pieces are located ideally and you are prepared for breakout, do it. Knight f4, so all the pieces occupy ideal positions. It's time to play, well, here after rook c1, it's time to play e4. After that, white is completely winning. Their task is just to not miscalculate. Okay, guys, do you have any questions? While you are thinking about the questions, I want to quickly remind you that on 23rd of October we are going to conduct the tournament with three money prizes. It's real cash prizes that you can, uh, that we will send to your PayPal account if you become a winner. And participants who get the fourth and the fifth place will be able to get one hour free lesson with the Feeder Master. Another important, uh, well, yeah, I'll share the link to the tournament. Another important uh, a thing I want you to remember, oh, for example, oh, here. If you're watching the webinar on uh, chess lands, or even if not, uh, here you can uh, sign up for your uh, lesson. So you click here. And you will be able to schedule your free lesson. I actually already demonstrated how to do it. If you want to book a one hour class with one of our coaches, just go to the main page, click here, book your lesson, choose a coach you would like to work with. Let's say uh, David, International Master David Fitzsimons. Choose the time that works well for you, let's say 10 p.m. Enter your name, family name, your uh, your email, your date of birth, click proceed to payment and enter your card details. It's bank card details. Then click book. Uh, if the payment is completed, um, there will be a confirmation that you booked the class with David Fitzsimons, which I actually recommend. He's a really good coach and soon we will release another course with David. Okay, I'm going to send you the links. So the first is the link for the tournament. And uh, the second link is the link where you can book a class. If you have any questions, you can ask me. If you have any suggestions about what I should cover on my next uh, event, also, I am open to any suggestions. Well, if there are no questions, then we can finish for today. Uh, so uh, what we are going to do next Sunday, um, I have some ideas and I will let you know by sending an email. I'm sure you enjoyed the webinar and now you can implement these ideas in your game and uh, coordinate your pieces at least slightly better. Those who are looking for private students, again, you can book them at chesslands.com. You can also message me at uh, tricksofchess at gmail.com and uh, school at uh, chesslands.com.
So both emails. Thank you for coming.